I was first creating videos for Shape, I was like, nobody wants three minute yoga. Nobody wants, and then I finally got five minutes and then finally seven minutes. And they were always like, only do one side and tell them to repeat it on the other side. And I was like, that's awful, but okay. Um, so and I was people like, like me, they would do that. And all of a right? sudden like, wait, I did one side, but how do I, I feel so it? uneven? Yeah, <laughs> exactly as we're like putting our head to the right. How do you do that? Welcome everyone. Oh, what a show we have in store for you. These are the ones that I love the most. Why? Because I have actually been with this guest on her show and I, I swear to God, it was one of the most like exciting, eventful, like we were bouncing ideas off each other. And I'm like, you got to be on my show. You got to be on my show. And so we have now had an opportunity and, and I've gotten to know her. And you guys, it's so amazing. This woman, Heidi Christopher, is a mom to three. We're going to talk more about those, those wonderful bursts of those because they are, we have some similarities there. And and she is also, she created the Cross Flow Yoga app and Cross Flow X. She is co host of Off the Gram podcast, Dr. Oz collaborator, creator, producer of Microsoft Bing Fitness yoga and msn yoga she is a wellness expert you probably have seen and heard of her on so many i couldn't even like list all of them she's everywhere she's a contributor to multiple publications platforms her goal is to make yoga inversions health strength and whole happy living accessible to everyone she is rated one of the hottest trainers in america by shape magazine she's most inspiring yoga teachers in the world by do you yoga and most popular instructor instructors in new york city by rate your burn and class pass heidi often can be seen featured as an expert on tv magazines you name it why because she's that good she's in a former award-winning actress of stage film tv and the graduate of cornell university she makes it her mission to bring happiness to everyone through every medium so good so good oh my gosh heidi honestly it just like it it is such a great day knowing that I had you at the end of the day. So excited for you to be here and to share your wisdom, your journey, your relaunch. So I'd love to start with, you know, before we get into all of the relaunches, you know, what would you say at this point that you're most proud of through all the relaunches, through everything you did? I'd like to know a personal and a professional one. Oh, Hillary, first of all, thank you so much for having me here today. I am so excited that we get to hang out more because I had the best time having you on Off the Gram. So thank you. Thank you. So good. So good. <laughs> so happy to be here. And oh, gosh, what a big question to start with. <laughs> I know I kind of um, like just decided I'm like, like, what's really like what what really just lights you up? Wow. Oh, gosh personally is the easiest answer in the world, my children. They are the thing I am the most proud of. I love them so deeply and I did wait longer to have them than some people. And I think that was the right move for me because it put me in a place where I could just savor every moment with them and just be so grateful for it because it didn't happen easily. So, the so let me ask first. you really, 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 <laughs> quite, really quickly. You had twins. Mm -hmm, I did. Yes. And how old twin mom club? <laughs> yes, exactly. For those wow. that for those that know, you also know I have twins. And how old were you when you decided to have your babies? Well, we decided to have babies two years prior to having them because mm. <laughs> it took that long. Um, you mentioned in that amazing um, 
entry, like intro. Thank you. I'm like entry level. No, intro. Amazing intro. <laughs> Not with you. Not with you. We bypassed any entry level. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I was so flattered. Thank you. Uh, but you mentioned that I was an actress and I was, and I was very heavily working. <laughs> I mean, I never, yeah. you know, I think you hear a lot of people who are they want to be an actress or they're an actress slash this or an actress slash that. And I, I was a working actor mm -hmm. and I worked nonstop, but I did notice, and it wasn't conscious, but I was losing weight and losing weight, and losing weight and working more and more and more and more. And I'm just under five, six. And one day I woke up and I couldn't get out of bed. Mm -hmm. And I was, I just knew something was wrong. And I, the world just felt so he like heavy, like the air felt heavy. That's, I physically felt like I couldn't get up. I was like, oh, something's wrong. And I had a scale in a closet, linen closet in the back of like 900 towels. And I drew it out and I was like, oh, I weigh 85 pounds. No. Oh, yeah. my. Wait a second. So you so, were what show were you doing at that time? Because I know you've done a ton. What were you? Yes. You know, at that time, I had actually just shot three back to back network pilots. Mm. So for anyone who doesn't know what that is when networks like major networks um are doing new shows they're looking at new shows they will green light what are called pilots which are the pilot episodes so the origin story mm -hmm. of a series is the pilot and so i had shot three back-to-back -back pilots which is really intense to do one a season so three was like oh my gosh this is amazing but i also woke up weighing nothing but the, I, co the correlation was the lower i weighed the more i worked and that is when I decided that we wanted to be pregnant. And <laughs> my body was like, yeah, that's not happening. You can yeah, barely you need a little bit yourself. More, you need a little bit more fat on those bones when you're going to try to have babies and all that. And I can't yeah. believe having grown up in LA okay, <laughs> and my and the school that I went to had a lot of celebrities, a lot of uh, parents and everything. Three pilots. That's crazy. It, yeah, I, I was, I, struggle not to say I was so lucky because I worked my patootie off. I, yeah. you know, as you mentioned, I went to Cornell, I went and did BADA, which is the British American Drama Academy. So I got to work with Royal Shakespeare Company. Like I did theater. Mm -hmm. I got mm -hmm. the classical training. I really dug into it. I had no interest in being on camera whatsoever, but that's where the money is. So that's what agents and managers send you on. Mm -hmm. But that's the moment that I was like, oh, this isn't healthy. This isn't sustainable. This isn't, I can't have a family with mm. this body. I, I physically can't. Every doctor is telling me that at some point I have to listen because they went to medical school, not me. <laughs> so you were, so you were really feeling just wiped out, fatigued. You had lost all this weight. Were people telling you? I mean, I no. guess in that industry, people are like, oh, you look great. <laughs> yes, that was exactly what I was oh. getting. And I, you know, I'm very fortunate in that as a teenager, I never had any eating disorder. It wasn't, yeah. that wasn't what was the fabric of me. I was too busy doing musical theater at the time to mm -hmm. worry about something as silly to me as weight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because camera wasn't my world back then. And it just... It's sort of like you're so busy on set. There's never time to eat. If you do eat, maybe you shove a protein bar down your throat, maybe some of the fruit from craft services, and that's it. And you're, you're exhausted when you get home and you go to bed and you wake up and you do it again. Okay. So it was, um, yeah, it was just such a wake up call. And I, I didn't love what I was doing. And that was also the part of it that so many people would kill to do what I was doing. And I really didn't enjoy it because I loved theater. And so when I got pigeonholed into television and movies, and I was on a soap opera for 10 years, I just kind of fell out of love with entertainment as a profession, as an actress. And everyone and wants to know what soap opera? As the world turns. <laughs> oh, yeah. As the world turns. Yes. It was the first soap opera back when they were sponsored by soap companies on the radio. Oh. Totally. I mean, it, it, and by the way, I was a soap opera fanatic. Like I would, I would watch the afternoon, you know, I'd come home from school and I'd get my little fix. So great. And, and it, it, 10 years, 
I mean, I did Oracle for 10 years and I felt like I was a dinosaur (laughs) at that point, right? 10 years at a company. And here you were doing that for 10 years. Then you're doing all these other things. You're getting you know, more and more publicity. They want you, you're the it girl. And now all of a sudden you're wanting to have a family and it's not working out for you. Besides the weight loss, mm-hmm. and not if that, that wasn't enough because that mm-hmm. was so much, but besides that and the fatigue, were there any other physical things that were happening with you at that time? Physical. Like I I think about when I was burning out and I was doing what you were doing and I was raising money and I was on the road all the time and I was leaving at that point, my kids at home and I was just constantly, I had this massive, almost like rash that like blew up on my chest that looked like open wounds. It was so awful. It was like, finally, like I have to like, hello, I have to take care of this. And yeah. that caused me to have a little bit of that, you know, wake up call. Um, I, you know, I'm sure I was super skinny and like, I looked at sure you were, yeah. <laughs> but it is, it's so, sometimes we do not listen to our body and clearly, you know, that was happening to you to get down to that weight. So yeah. what did you do? I mean, what, what was the point when you went to your husband, you went to your family, like, what happened? So. I knew some, that day that I couldn't get out of bed, I will never forget. It was it was such a different sensation that I've ever felt in my life and I'm very grateful to not have felt it since then. I, it really felt like I had a, an actual anvil, like you see in cartoons, those like giant tons, those big things of metal, really felt like that was on my chest. And I couldn't physically sit up. And I, by the time I got the scale out, cause I was like, well, something's wrong and I, Honestly, that whole summer I'd been like, oh, it is so hot in New York that my clothes are expanding. It was like the opposite of a college girl with a dryer that's yeah. like, you know, for the first time drinking all this beer and gaining weight. And is like, oh, well, it's the college dryer shrinking my clothes. I literally was like, the humidity in New York is making my clothes expand. And I was like, oh, it's not the humidity in New York, is it? <laughs> we tell ourselves things to keep us going. And that was the story I was telling myself. Um, and I, you know, I was, there weren't very many other, I don't know what else my body could have done other than shut down, which is what it did. I wasn't getting hives. I wasn't getting that type of reaction, but my body just shut down. Mm. And, um, and at that point I'd been really disenchanted with the industry for a lot of other reasons. And I'd been in a lot of situations that, you know, could have, if I had let them go, been a me too moment, but I was like, I had a bad Uh, temper before yoga. And so I consider myself very lucky that I can get get arrested for punching someone in the face. I mean, just it's just not who I was and it's not how I wanted to make my way through an industry. And I I always hated that part of it. I always hated that that situation would exist. And, you know, you'd be up for a role and you'd be the producer session, the final callback and you'd show up and it would just be you and one guy. And you're like, wait, this isn't what this is supposed to be. And I'd be like, leader, see you later. And there were you at that point, because you've always been incredibly confident. Did you ever feel like, okay, you know, this is what everyone's doing in those roles and trying to get those bigger, um, you know, bigger acting roles. Did you ever have to compromise yourself? I refused, which is why I left the industry. It just, and you know, God bless anyone who can do it any other way. I just, I didn't have the resiliency to be able to face that situation over and over and over and over again and not get angry. I got angry. And that was, I have to ask this. So (laughs) now that everything's come out, right? Mm -hmm. Over the last few years and, you know, the disgust that we all, are feeling about these these people in power and what they were doing to these victims. I mean, aren't you, are, do you feel so fortunate that you were able to get out before something before something happened? Yes, yes, and I do. And that was calculated on my part because I saw the trajectory of it. I saw the way it was going and I just I refused to take part in that. I just, I worked too hard for too long to to get somewhere because of that. And it just, it was never gonna be my path. 
So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely grateful that I exited when I did. My agents and managers were not happy with me, um, but we're still friends, all of us. <laughs> That's good. And so, um, and so you you made the decision. You told yes. your agent, you were like, hey, mm -hmm. can't do this anymore. And of course, they're saying, what are you crazy? Because yes. you're a hot ticket in you know, the entertainment world. But yet you had that inner voice. And mm -hmm. it, it really seems like it's loud. It, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's loud. Um, I did have help. I did. So at some point in my acting career, we moved very last second. And as an actress on your non shooting days, you're auditioning. And what that looks like is you could be in 10 different places. I was in New York City at that time. I also did LA for a, a little bit, but I was in New York at the time. And I became a member of a sports club that had locations everywhere because on your audition days, you have to show up to one audition looking like a heroin addict and the next one looking like a lawyer for law and order. And the next one, you have to have brown hair and blue eyes. So you better have those contacts ready. And the next one, you're blonde curly. It, it's just, and you have to have all those things and you have to be able to change, go, change, go, change, go, change, go. So being a member of a sports club was imperative. I needed a place oh, to change. We have to <laughs> pause right there because this is so good. And it leads us into your next relaunch. So yes. everybody, Stay where you are. We'll be right back and we will be talking to Heidi about the next part of her significant relaunch. This episode is brought to you by my very own Labor of Love, my most recent book, Relaunch. This book is a collection of my stories, other stories, and is a motivational guide to living a new 3HQ lifestyle, sparking your heart to ignite your life. It's available for purchase via Amazon. Get ready to try on the 3HQ method that I've been using for years throughout my entire life, reaching the next level in all areas, both professionally and personally. Get your copy today at www.therelaunchbook.com. Welcome back everyone. Okay, I've got Heidi Christopher with me and what an interesting, way that she has come to this point in the relaunch journey again she has been a successful first off academic student and just nailed it with all of the different ways that she was able to highlight her career in acting on stage and then she realizes as you know oh so many actors do that the path that's laid before you is 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 a tough one and before we went on break we were discussing she's you know running here she's curly with green eyes here she's you know a heroin addict here she's doing all these different things and that allowed her to end up going into a gym right yes i use these gyms to change all the time and since i had the membership i was like oh well i should take these classes and then I enjoyed gym classes. And when we, it was a very New York story. We had a perfect apartment. It was amazing. And one day there was a contract. He was an architect who knocked at the door and he was like, oh, your landlord didn't tell you I was coming. And I was like, no. He's like, okay, but you know, we're getting the place in like two weeks. And I was like, nope, nobody told me that. <laughs> so I had to find a new apartment really quickly. Wound up somewhere that was very far away from any of these gyms. So, and I mean, very far. So there was no shot in February that this girl was ever going to set foot in a gym. So I Googled gyms in the zip code and a yoga studio came up mm. and I just took a really deep breath and I was like, oh, that sounds so boring. Everybody's <laughs> it wasn't that funny that your oh. first thought, because I remember my yeah. first thought when I was like, you know, younger and getting into yoga that actually helped me get my body back after my twins was yoga but I remember like oh god here we go it's the only thing I can do I might as well do it so mm -hmm. yeah yeah so I you know took a deep breath rolled my eyes and was like everybody's telling me to try this stupid yoga thing it sounds so lame and I looked up their most advanced class because you know if I was going to break a sweat it clearly wasn't going to be in a beginner class I'm like I am my own worst nightmare. <laughs> if that, if I as a teacher, so I as a student, I would have been like, 
Yeah, just keep the hard one. I can do it. I can do yeah. it with yoga. Of course I can do yoga. Oh, so hard. Right? And the first class I was in halfway through, it was a 90-minute power vinyasa, like heavy on the arm balances, heavy on inversions. I was dripping with sweat and just euphoric. And I was like, yeah. what is this? It makes me so happy. I feel so good. I feel so... And that class, because I chose that one, that's why I got hooked into yoga, because I had the enthusiastic teacher who was showing me that my body was capable of all these things I never imagined possible, mm -hmm. that I was stronger than I ever imagined possible. And getting into yoga was the first thing that prompted me to think about food as fuel so that when I hit the point where I wanted to have children, I could actually think of it that way. It's like, I want to be stronger, so I have to eat more to feel that way. And so that was a tool for me. And it, okay, so how old are you at this point? How old are we? Oh my gosh. What do you think? I'm like, oh, when I first discovered yoga, it was before 30 uh -huh. for sure. Um, because I definitely remember like a big 30th birthday party with my yoga friends. <laughs> so I'm like, thank you, Mark. Time so and it's the birthday parties we remember. So, right. okay, so all of a sudden though, you now are at this, you know, very 85, 86 pound weight. You're mm -hmm. just shy of five, six. You're trying to like, okay, get back healthy. Mm -hmm. You're told that they're about to gut your apartment. You got to move. Now, interesting, you moved to a place. Was it too far for you to go and to a gym? It was much too far, but the yoga studio was, was on the block. Was it also too far for you to go and audition? Was it kind of like everything? No, you could still audition. I could totally still audition. It was just the like maintenance gym, you know, on the reg was never going to happen, like ever. Mm -hmm. I was never going to a class to like sweat. It was just going to be used for changing. <laughs> for changing okay yeah so now you're kind of doing both you're kind of yes both I worlds. sign up for the new person special go like there are some days i went to three classes a day i would leave set because you you are on set for hours and hours and hours doing nothing and they would redo your hair and makeup when you came back anyway so i was just going all the time and i loved it so much and then everybody kept asking me questions as if I was a teacher. And I was like, oh, I'm not a teacher. I'm not qualified to answer that. I can't help you because I'm not a teacher. I don't have the credentials to help you. And then at some point, three films in a row that were completely unrelated to one another, it was one of the financial crises, dropped funding. So I had six months of no work ahead of me, which was unprecedented for me. And it just so happened to be the time in New York when all the teacher trainings are on like a similar cycle, kind of like semesters for colleges and all that. And the training was about to start. And I was like, well, I always wanted to learn more about yoga. Never in my head in a million years was I going to teach yoga. I just wanted to learn more about the practice that made me feel so good. And so I signed up for a training, loved every second of it, couldn't have loved it more. And then at the end, they give you one class to teach that people can come right at the end of this grueling training. It's so funny. My husband was getting his executive MBA at the same time. I did more work. There are plenty of yoga teacher trainings that are like certificates, you know, mills, but this was not one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, but I loved every second of it. And I did, I taught this class and all of my teacher friends sent studio owners to it. And they were like, would you like this class? Would you like to teach here? Would you like to teach here? And I was like, but in New York, there are more yoga teachers than actors. So it's so weird that I was getting offered all these classes. And I was like, oh, but I worked during the week. And they're like, how about a Saturday class? which by the way is the most coveted spot because you get paid by the head. So every yoga teacher wants 7 p.m. at night on a weekday or a weekend because those are the times you can fill a room and earn a living. And so I was like, well, okay, fine. I'll teach on the weekends. I will say yes to sub a class if the night before my agents and managers say I am free. And then one night hit that I had said yes to sub a class at a Wednesday at 12 p.m. that I was probably going to make $20, no joke, to teach. And... I got a call late night from my manager about a producer session, which is like the final, 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 final callback. It's between like you and a superstar for a main role on a main show, like a big, big show. And I was so angry because I had said yes to sub this $20 yoga class the next day. I was furious that they just assumed that I was free for them the next day. It was like 10 p.m. <laughs> at night. I was Mm -hmm. And and I was telling my friend about this who owned a studio. She was like, you know, Heidi, 
sounds to me like you really don't love this acting thing, but the yoga thing is like falling in your lap. And, you know, she was Deepak Yoga. Deepak Chopra's personal yoga instructor. And so anytime I needed to hear something, she would say, so Deepak says, <laughs> and then it's like, well, you have to listen at that point. You really do. And, that, that's yeah. a big one. Like, you know, if you hear that, you're like, oh. Yeah. You're like, I guess I have to listen. Yeah. So this is my friend, Tara Stiles. And she said this to me and she was like, sometimes Deepak says, that, you know, easy road is the road you're meant to take. And you're not supposed to keep fighting for what you think you should have. And I was like, well, that's lazy. <laughs> and then what I refer to as the struggle bus. How can yes. you be on the struggle bus? Mm-hmm. Like it has yes. to be a struggle or is it really worth anything? Right? Ah. Yeah. And so her words like sat with me. And then this thing happened with this producer session. And I had that moment where I was like, wow. Somebody else deserves to be getting this call tonight, not you, because you don't want the call. And that's not fair to anyone. It's really not. And and at the time, I had just actually shot something with Shape Magazine with Tara um, together. And Shape had asked me to do all these write ups for it in like a couple hours. And I was like, oh, sure. No problem. And they were like, oh, hey, do you want to write our first yoga column? And I was like, oh, sure. Like, <laughs> you did not go to the callback. No, the- no. <gasps> Such a good story. And then look at what it turned out. I mean, it turned out to just open up the gates, the floodgates. And actually, Deepak was pretty much right on, right? <laughs> he was. But- and the thing, I feel like so many people cling to <laughs> something they are doing that is no longer right for them or doesn't fit them any longer. Because it's just the only identity they've known. And they're afraid that they'll have wasted all the time that they put into this particular thing. And like, let me tell you, I never could have done the things that I do with yoga if I hadn't had every moment of experience. I was the one take wonder for all the fitness magazines doing videos because I had the soap opera training for 10 years where you get fired if you need a second take. Like I never needed a second take, not ever. I made it work. Oh God, that's so good. (laughs) So it's like all of the things, you know, hindsight is always going to be 2020, but everything leads up to where we are right in this moment, right? And every ounce of work that I put into my acting career allowed me to be comfortable teaching a thousand people at Bryant Park over the summer, to be comfortable leading a room in any country, no matter what the language was, because it's a comfort level that I don't know if you can learn it after a certain point. I'm not honestly sure. You know, people are like, oh, she has it. And you're like, okay, well, what is it? It's like comfort, I think. I what is that? But you, so you've been doing this how long at this point? Right now, you've been doing- The yoga, I think I, I think I had that meeting with my agents and managers where I fully stopped acting in 2010 or 2011. It was okay. what, it was winter of that year is when I was like, I mean, I'd been teaching, but I was like, I'm out, 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 out. Like there will be no more distractions from my yoga at this point. And you have, but what's interesting is that you haven't gone back to acting as you had known it before, yet you're using your skills. You built on it every single day. And now, like you said, you know, you, you do these massive yoga, you've got, I can't, hundreds of thousands of people that follow you. And you built up really this incredible business around something that you really love. I I call it, as you know, 3HQ, your head, your heart, your higher self. And you really are in alignment. You really are. And people are going to say, well, it's yoga. Of course, she's in alignment. But you, you went there. Yeah. No, the most inflexible people that I've ever met in my life are some of the most successful yoga people. And it blows my mind every time. And I'm like, how like they're preaching flexibility and they're so inflexible in their mind i don't get it so it's it's not of course for sure i was super impressed when we talked and and you're explaining this concept because i think that it is yoga has such a mind body it's mind body spirit it's exactly 3hq yes that's why i resonated so much listening to you talk (laughs) Why I was like, oh my God, and everything you were saying, I'm like, uh-huh, that's exactly it. But you take 
the practice of yoga and you, I mean, and by the way, everyone, you need to go and see these videos, the, the positions this girl can get in. I mean, like, I am so impressed and you have convinced me just by the short friendship that we've had that I am now getting back into yoga. Like I literally yes. went to classes because I was feeling like every, every year you get stiffer and stiffer. And I went to try to do a cartwheel oh and i know i know i know <laughs> and i tried oh, my. and i went down and i'm like holy smokes i really can't i haven't done one since i was you know what in my 20s and all if your time, hamstrings aren't torn i would give that a win <laughs> oh, God, <it> was like, <gasps> yeah but i thought at that point it was right after we had you know we had had that great conversation i'm like all right that's it i'm, I'm in and I have to tell you, I already, I was talking um, about how I felt like the Tin Man and can somebody just like, you know, do a little mm -hmm. oil lube here because I'm like, <laughs> I, you know, I'm like a squeak, squeak, or I'd be the one that stands up and my body's like, Kirk. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that was me. And even in the short amount of time, but I've, I've noticed that I'm like already, it, it's it's already impacting me, but help help everyone understand the mind body spirit connection of what you have really allowed to shape your life with yoga. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't touch my toes when I started my yoga practice. I couldn't, and you know, as you've seen in pictures, now my toes are above my head, behind them, and all these all these different things. And I, it it happened when I allowed my mind to believe that I could. Because if you believe you can, you will. And if you believe you can't, you won't. Whatever you decide in your brain is true will come to fruition in life. And that is just it. And okay, so everyone out there who is raising their hand with me right now and saying, my story is I'm not flexible anymore. Uh huh. It's your brain. It is not your body. It is your brain. And so when people say, I want to start to, you know, all right, I'm going to, you know, I've heard Heidi, I've seen her. I've heard Hillary. Hillary sounds a little bit more like me. Can't touch my toes. I sound like, you know, I'm 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 an old lady in a younger woman's body. But how do you what do you suggest is kind of that first entry into a yoga practice? Well, so that's why I created Crossflow X. And I was asked to create that class for boutique fitness in Manhattan based on my shape mashup yoga videos. Cause there's only so many times you can do butt blasting yoga or tummy taming yoga before you are bored to tears with it. So we started mashing up things and I was recording a yoga Tabata mashup. And for anyone who's not familiar with Tabata, it's a very short workout, but incredibly intense. It's 20 seconds on, like to the point of you want to throw up. It's so hard with the cardio and a 10 second dead rest. And so when I did the mashup, what I did was I did hits. So like a mountain climber. And instead of just stopping and resting, I would do a restorative yoga pose like a pigeon. And up until the recording of that video, Pigeon was my nemesis. It's a hip opener and it was my nemesis. And I hated every second of it. I'd pick at my toes, like be like, oh, I need a new manicure, pedicure. Like, you know, anything. <laughs> just Are not. You mind? Are you <laughs> when I'm doing it? Yes. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Before, the same. before we continue, we have to take another quick break. And when we come back, everyone, we are going to be on this path together, this journey, because the more you can do it now, trust trust her because this is what she says that you're going to get stronger you're going to get the core stronger and you're going to actually feel better as you age and that's what we all want to be able to do so don't go away we'll be right back this episode is brought to you by my very own labor of love my most recent book relaunch this book is a collection of my stories other stories and is a motivational guide to living a new 3hq lifestyle sparking your heart to ignite your life it's available for purchase via amazon get ready to try on the 3hq method that i've been using for years throughout my entire life reaching the next level in all areas both professionally and personally get your copy today at www.therelaunchbook.com. Hey everyone, welcome back. I am with my good friend, Heidi Christopher. She's in the house and let me tell you, we are talking now about how an actress who was killing it ends up in yoga, creating one of the biggest yoga movements 
out there. And she now is trying, as we're talking, to discuss how do you get into yoga when we all feel like we can't touch our toes? I mean, touch our toes. How about let's start with our knees? So I'm asking Heidi, how do we do this? How do we make this a practice? What can we expect? And where are the videos that we can come watch you? (laughs) <laughs> yes, ma'am. I love all of it. So it's Crossbow Yoga is the app I eventually created because I worked for so many other people and didn't get to create the content that I felt like people really needed. We were talking about right before the break Crossbow X and how I combined hits with restorative yoga. And that was the genesis of Crossbow X because when I was shooting that video after a mountain climber, I went into pigeon without giving my mind a second to think, I hate this pose. I can't do this pose. And my body just did it. And I've never felt so good in my life. And it was this giant exhale of my entire being was just like, Mm. I can let go. Like, it's okay. And it was, it was life altering. And that's why when I was asked to create a class, I was like, I'm creating it around this concept that if you fatigue your body and you heat it up from the inside, it, it's forced to let go because we have to find a balance in all things, right? So yoga in India was created for teenage boys to exhaust them. What it came to be in I America. That. that is yes. a miracle. Yeah, teenage it's boys just to exhaust them. Yeah, and it has been so watered down that your first reaction and my first reaction to yoga was like, oh, that sounds so boring. And that's not what it was meant to be. So with Crossflow, I was trying to sort of claw back the original intention of it while making it a little bit shorter so that it's more realistic for today's person because most of us work can do 500 things and cross flow x specifically with the hits involved allows it to be so much shorter and when i was first creating videos for shape i was like nobody wants three minute yoga nobody wants and then i finally got five minutes and then finally seven minutes and they were always like only do one side and tell them to repeat it on the other side and i was like that's awful, but okay. Um, so I was people like, like me that would be, <laughs> and all of a right? sudden, like, wait, I did one side, but how My do I feel so it? uneven? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. As we're like putting our head to the right, how do you do that? Okay, yeah. so they were saying so, that, but you're like, no, no. Yeah, I was like, it's too short. And then cut to postpartum and twins. I'm Googling seven minute yoga videos with my name because I'm like, I know they exist. I don't know where they are anymore, but I know they're out there. And so it came to this moment where I was like, oh, wow, people do need five minute yoga videos that are effective and not just like, oh, let's breathe. Like breathing is great. There is a place for breathing. There's a place for grounding. There's a place for all those things. But there are also a giant amount of humans who need to move, who need to sweat, who need to get their endorphins up, who need to loosen up their bodies in a very short amount of time. And that's what Crosswalk allows for. So I have an entire section on the Crosswalk Yoga app, which you know you can also do on Apple TV, on the internet. On it doesn't have to be on your iPhone. It can be on any everyone phone anywhere. Lis- Hold on, everyone who's listening right now, she's saying Cross Flow X Yoga. Well, Crosswalk X is the first class, and then I built an app and a program called Crosswalk Yoga, which also has like Crosswalk V for Vinyasa, Z for Sleep. Rx I do with surgeons for specific conditions. So it helps heal specific things because I have had to start over many times with um, injuries and healing. Yes, I have had to relaunch many, many. I wanted you to say it (laughs) many times. Yeah. Here's the thing that I also remember reading, which we haven't discussed, is that you did get into a pretty serious car accident. Well, so that was when I was 18 and they didn't, they were so concerned with my neck and being paralyzed for the rest of my life that they never even took film of my lower back. And I was complaining of back pain the whole time as an 18 year old. And they were like, eh, it's referral pain. It's referral pain from the cervical spine. And at a certain point, I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to college now. Bye. And then in my, when I had first started yoga in New York, I was walking up Broadway and I collapsed because the scar tissue from my broken vertebra from that 18 year old accident had finally hit the sciatic nerve. And the surgeons were like, I can't believe you're walking. I've never seen somebody walking with these injuries. And I was like, okay, well clearly I don't need back surgery because yoga is doing something for me. So I worked with a PT to build up the muscles that protect the spine. And so that's just one of the things I've learned through so many injuries, how to heal through yoga. And I never had a back surgery and I'm so grateful. And obviously there's a time and a place I've had two wrist surgeries and not because of yoga. Um, 
Was wait, it at, wait, wait, wait. Was it maybe skiing or was it snowboarding? Um, sadly, the reason I moved out of New York a year ago is because I was attacked in broad daylight by five people and I, they completely shattered my wrist. Mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. I didn't hear that. So that's another relaunch because <laughs> I'm the yoga expert without wrists, right? And so I created an entire section of the app that was wrist free, which by the way, was the number one request in COVID because everybody was at home without equipment and all of a sudden did yoga without supervision. So they were having improper wrist alignment and getting carpal tunnel, and then they couldn't do the yoga on their wrists. So it was this whole vicious cycle. So I created an entire section for that. Okay. How... <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you were talking about how everything is building on, you know, what's happened. Yeah. Talk about it when you said, you know, the, the whole mind body and how you, you've had, you've had injuries. This one where you had your, your wrist broken and then now you've really shown yourself that you can do it. And I'm a big advocate where if you can see it, you believe it. Yes. Then you know, others can have it happened for them, right? Yeah. When you see your clients and you're like, hey, I've I've seen what some would call a miracle and it's not, it's repeatable, yeah. it's you can do it. I believe if you see one that has had it happen for them, it can happen for you. And that's the- 100%. So you coming through such a, a, a real traumatic event, if you hadn't had yoga, if you hadn't have been working with your body, what would, what do you think your outcome would have been? I know what it would have been. They wanted to fuse my wrist, which means they never bend again. And I refused <laughs> um, because for a surgeon, I mean, I had the best surgeon in the world, but the people that I saw prior to him wanted to fuse it because that's their surgical record. It's a perfect surgery. It's a victory for them. If basically when they're repairing a joint, you're never actually going to get a hundred percent of the mobility almost certainly back. Even if it's 99.9, .9, that makes their surgical record have a scar on it that they don't want. Mm. And so I, thankfully, my father-in-law was a massive orthopedic surgeon in New York for 40 years. He was the head of a major hospital there. So he pulled in favors for me, which I was so fortunate to have. But, you know, the, the whole time I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm not fusing my wrist. Like it has to heal. It has to heal. Thank God he's <laughs> He was your advocate. My dad was an orthopedic surgeon and my grandfather. So you know um, all about second opinions, which most people don't. Oh, everybody. Everybody gets second opinions. It yes. is even a third. I had a third yes. opinion and it changed the outcome of the surgery that I just had. It was a womanly mm -hmm. surgery, but yeah. I mean, it literally it, it changed everything. So yes, please, please do that. But that, you know, Heidi, your journey it, it's so incredible. Do you find now that you have, you know, even more of an appreciation for what yoga can do and how you can help people? A hundred percent because I've had to start over so many times and listen, I know no one can see me, but like when I got out of my wrist surgery, they said to flex my hand and it basically, it basically didn't move. And I felt like I was flexing it. Like I was in a handstand and that devastation is like, it's like your body betrayed you because you feel the movement and it's not doing it. And you have to start so from scratch. And I, you know, after my twin pregnancy, it was an emergency C-section. I'd had to have a surclage at 22 weeks. I was on bed rest. They dislocated my ribs. I have been through so much physical stuff, which has been a blessing and a gift at the end of it all. It's hard in the moment always to see it because I get to be a beginner again. So it reminds me what it's like to start over in yoga, like from having your core completely cut through every layer, you have to rebuild your core from the beginning, from scratch, from the start. And so you can remember what your students are experiencing. And it's so much more fresh in your mind than it was from decades ago, right? So every time I've had a setback and have relaunched, mm -hmm. I just view it that way. It's like, I'm going to be a better teacher for this because it's more relevant to me, their experience right now, I can relate to it more than I could before. So this is wonderful. And it gives me a whole other slew of doctors to tap from for the app for different conditions. And so it helps people along that journey so they can realize their potential and their strength and you know see that it's possible because you have to know that it's possible. 
what you're saying just resonates and it goes back to when we were just starting and we weren't uh, recording yet and we you mentioned you know god i've had so many relaunches okay <laughs> i have been coined the relaunch queen and i'm like uh, i'm not doing that i i i also love the the real or the energy the energy queen i'll take that one you totally are you give me so much energy i'm so grateful thank you that one i love but when you start to say like the relaunch queen kind of like i'm expecting more and more and more and i already know relaunches are around the corner i already know they're gonna happen i already know but i'm like I'm like, you know, mercy, mercy, no more right now. I just need to like get my get myself back like you've been doing with your relaunches to the point where you're like strong again. You have that inner core strength, which is, you know, a metaphor for everything that you're doing in your life. And so I, I'm really curious what now, and I love that you opened up with your relaunch personal, but business wise, what what uh, what is Heidi going to be doing? What's next for you in terms of what you want to do and that next direction? Yeah, I mean, I really want to help moms. I know that's mm. you know because I'm a mom and I I have I just don't think there are enough fitness programs that are actually effective for moms and certainly not enough that address mind and body because moms need both of those things desperately. Many moms don't get to talk to other grownups. Many moms don't have two seconds to themselves. So if I can give them a five to 10 minute video that like really gets their heart rate up, really gets them breathing deeper, opens their chest and helps them have a better day, then my day is made right? Because if I can help somebody else feel better and, and feeling better allows them to have hope, allows any of us to have hope. Because if you're in a dark place, it's hard to see light. Mm -hmm. But if you have just a glimmer of that light, it allows you to believe that it's possible, that other things are possible, that you can feel better, that you can be stronger, that you can feel competent, that you can feel capable, and you can remember who you started off to be. Because a lot of moms lose themselves being a mom and they forget who they really were as a person. And I am all about my children and putting them, on, I love them with every fiber of my being. I wanted them so much. And I tell them every day, I say, how much do I love you? And they reply more than anything in the whole wide world. And it is true. It's true. Mm -hmm. They know because I, I just repeat it. I love them so much. But it's also important to remember who we are as humans and what, who, who we are to share with the universe. You know, each of us are unique and we're here for a reason and you have to remember that reason. Okay, Heidi, it's not just the younger moms. We are no. <laughs> the mid zone mom, right? With five kids, I've got three of my own, two step kids. We're like going, moving What here. is the age range? We have from now 20 to 25. I mean, I went to a college graduation this week. I mean, we are everywhere and every weekend it's like something else is happening. So that whole mom yoga thing. Yeah. <laughs> tapping yeah. into me, being able yes. to call it the O diet, the oxytocin diet. We all need it. And that is that connection to self. And it's so incredible. So are you creating these videos? How do we get involved in your world, girl? Yes. Um, so the, the app, the online program, again, it can be accessed on the internet. You do not need a fancy smartphone to access it. You also can access it on your smartphone apple or not apple <laughs> like any of them any. and yeah and on you know there's so many platforms but it's cross flow yoga cross flow is one word because i like to cross yoga flow with other modalities so that you maximize your time on the mat and feel your very best uh, so cross flow yoga is i got it you need to look out there and again, as you said, you've got shortened programs, longer programs, you've got whatever a person actually needs. Everything from five minutes to, to 65 minutes. And you can, you know, if that's not long enough for you, amazing that you have that time, you can put them together and they're all broken down into categories, segments. And my latest is a made for mamas, an entire category. I have 250 some odd videos on the app right now. So, and I take requests from our members 
all the time because I need ideas too. So it's doing me a favor when you ask her what you need. And well, so I always make what everybody needs happen. On every person, honestly, I, I, yoga is probably the best gift you can give yourself. I mean, trust me in the short amount of time that I've been doing it just recently, I'm like, God, I missed it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm back. I feel good again. So yes. unfortunately, it is time to wrap this show up. Heidi, thank you so much for being here. As thank always, you. I love, I love the connection. I am excited to get onto your app. We'll have everything in the show notes. And everybody, let us know. I mean, let us know after you've done how many how many sessions do you need before you can start to get into feeling a little bit like you're not, you know, that that crickety thing. You know, I I think three is always the magic number for everything. I always feel like the third one is like is the charm. <laughs> so I think try it three times. Let's try short that. ones that that are not above your level. Like just be honest with where you are because it's the perfect place. You are at the perfect place right here, right now for you. So don't hurt yourself by doing something, you know, as idiotic as I was going to my first yoga class. I was 20, you know, like I <laughs> we're not there anymore. Yeah. Well, everyone, so again, it was so great having Heidi Christopher here. Check her out. Follow her Instagram. And my name. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. And so right now, everybody, it is time to be you and relaunch in to the next awesome version of you. We'll see you next week. And again, make sure you check out Heidi. If you like this video and want to get more like it, head over here.